Hello everyone, welcome to SchoolNet's webinar series of past winners in Microsoft's Partners in Learning Forum. Today we have Victor Ngabeni, who is a former past winner in this competition. Victor represented South Africa at the World Finals in Helsinki. He now works full-time for Microsoft as the Africa Stick Manager. Victor will share his experiences in a presentation called What Makes a Project Innovative? Over to you, Victor. Hi, everyone. So my name is Victor Ngobeni, and um, I used to be a geography teacher, having started in, two, in 1994 uh, teaching in a school in, in Limpopo. And uh, I'm one of those teachers who believe, or I used to be one of those teachers who believe that um, teachers change the world. So I used to make sure in my teaching I try as much as possible to explore ways of, of making my teaching interesting and engaging at the same time. And uh, so the school where I used to work at in 1994 when I started, there were no computers, but we were lucky to get a donation around, um, to, uh, around the year 2000, 2002, a donation of about 25 computers. And from there, we were able to uh, do quite a number of uh, um, programs or courses aimed at improving our skills around teaching with, with technology. And one of the courses that we did, or one of the programs that we did was the Partners in Learning program. And from the program, I then discovered, the, um, uh, I discovered about the Innovative Teacher Forum, which is a forum aimed at, at um, um, assisting or getting teachers who teach with technology to share their ideas. And then I entered the project in 2007, in 2006, the first time, and I had no idea what the forum was all about, so I just used it, used it as a learning curve. And then I came back again in 2007 and entered another project, which uh, went very well this time around because it went on to win the, um, the national awards and um, went on to compete. I went on to compete with another teacher, another colleague of mine, but from KZN, but we went on to compete at the World Finals, which were now held in, in Helsinki in October 2007. And I think from there on, uh, the, um, the forum, my participation in the forum, opened, opened my eyes to, to the world, and it gave me opportunities to pay, maybe try out my skills at the higher level. And um, uh, in 2008, I got an opportunity to work at the district level in Springs, in Gauteng. And then in 2009, I went on to be hired as the stick manager, School Technology Innovation Center manager at Microsoft in Joburg. And my current role is to support innovative teachers in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa um, in, 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 the, uh, in the form of you know, assisting them around how can they teach better with, with technology. And what I'm going to share with you in this podcast is some of my experiences being first as a teacher um, when, when I put together a project that went on to win um, or to proceed to the world finals. And I'll also go on and share with you some of my experiences being being a judge of the forum. And so, um, let me share with you briefly uh, my project, the, the one that I did with my students in 2007 while I was still a teacher. So I used to, do, to be a geography teacher for grade 11 and 12. And um, so, as I said, this used to be a very rural school with kids who had no or very little experience of what what cities were and yet in the curriculum we had a we had a topic or subtopic called uh, settlement geography where we had to look at you know rural and urban settlements so my kids being in the rural settlements they had they had all the first hand experiences of what rural settlements were but quite a number of them didn't have experience of of what towns or cities were like. So I saw this as an opportunity to, to you know, organize 
put together or design a project where I get them to experience urban urban settlements in in sort of first hand um, uh, in a first hand experience kind of. So so what we did is um, I went on to to find partner schools in in the U.S. Um, I used then um, uh, uh, schools connecting uh, site called EPAS and um, I got the two schools and um, the, the teachers from the two schools agreed to, 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 for us to work in this project. And so what we did is I organized a trip with, for my students to the nearest town and um, the, the trip was a whole um, project with a lot of activities um, before the trip, during the trip, and after the trip. So we went to the nearest town, which is called Sanin, which is around 80 kilometers from, from my, my rural town. And then, so I took the students there, and uh, the, uh, all along the way, we had to do a number of activities, observing land farms and uh, farming activities. So there was a whole handout of worksheet that the kids were completing as we go along. And when we arrived in the town, they also had to complete the worksheet. And then they came back and they had to, to type the essays. They had to go to the computer lab and type essays and describe their journey from, from, from the school to the town and back. So the whole point was that for them to learn um, using computers, because as they typed their essays in the computer lab, they were learning um, subconsciously grammar, a lot of grammar there, like spell checks and um, um, uh, uh, um, sort, of, sort of syntax and a, a lot of other things as well. So, and then after that, the 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 essays were shared with with other students and more especially they were marked by the English teacher at our school. So um, being a geography teacher, it also involved also I also worked with the English teachers and, and, and the essays were actually marked and and um, formally by by the, by the teacher. And then that was the first part of the project. And the second part of the project, um, with, with the two schools that we were linked with in the U.S., they also did a similar trip, but uh, they went to the nearest countryside, sort of rural site. And um, they, so the kids from my school and kids from the two schools, they, they through the, the epass.com network, they had to... Uh, get together and share quite a number of things. They shared poems, they shared songs. So the kids from from my my school, they shared songs about you know the city, the the urban area, and you know the kids from the other end, they shared um, uh, uh, poems, songs about the the rural areas and stuff like that. And so. And, and then it was very fun for the students. Uh, imagine students in rural areas, 2007, and uh, communicating with other students, their peers, on the other part of the world, um, using the internet and so on. So it was really, really exciting for the students. But, but then later, the uh, third part of the project was, was for my students to look at their community and and identify those businesses that could be improved, that they could, that could, that they, they could help market or you know, uh, publicize to the entire community, as it were. And then they discovered three commun three businesses, uh, which was the dry cleaner, the driving school in in our community, as well as the poultry farm. And then the kids went to the to the businesses and proposed to. To design adverts, audiovisual adverts for the businesses, and then it was another very exciting um, uh, activity for the students, to, for them because they were now doing something that was meaningful, something that was gonna go beyond the walls of the classroom because the adverts were now heard on the local radio, as well as uh, published on the local newspaper, and the businesses were very happy about it and. Um, um, they paid the school 
um, some funds, some money in order for us to buy some ink and stuff like that, some small things to, to make our computer centers, our computer center run. And then uh, in the next slide, you'll see I have a couple of pictures of the students I was working with. And you will see um, they had to complete, as I said at the beginning, worksheets. So this was just not, this was not a trip where they just go and see the town and come back, but they had to do quite a lot of work before, during, and after the trip. And, and then, um, so, so that's all about my project. And uh, in the next slide now, I want to talk about my experience being a judge and perhaps, perhaps share some of my valued um, opinions um, that I picked up um, being a judge. So now being a judge, one, one of the things that, um, so I have a couple of ideas there. One of the ideas, one of the things that I know when judges look at a project or come to a teacher's stand, they want to hear not too many things, but a couple of things. The first thing that they might like to hear is they want to hear what is the unique, unique idea that the teacher came up with. Uh, education systems are very similar the world over, and the problems are very similar as well, but it, it's in the way that we solve the challenges uh, or the problems that we experience in our communities. That is the way that, is the way that shows our innovativeness. So when judges come to teach us then, they want to hear a unique way in which the teacher has introduced the idea or got students to work to solve a particular challenge. Also, they also want to find out how the teacher has used ICT in the lesson. Um, we've seen quite a number of projects where the ICT becomes the lead. So we hear a teacher saying, oh, in this project, I got my teachers, my learners to use the computer because the computer was lying there and unused. That's perhaps not the best way to use the ICT or the computer. The best way is, is the computer to be used as a way of maybe supporting learning, enhancing learning, or extending learning. So in that way, the, the ICT becomes the vehicle, but the, the curriculum objectives are the driver of learning. So the teacher just incorporates the technology at a critical point where technology will make um, a, a meaningful contribution to the learning process. Very important also, judges would like to see a project that flows. And so often we see projects that don't quite flow. Everything is all over the place. But it helps quite a lot if you have a project that is really well structured so we can see what is the motivation, so what, is, what was the challenge or the big question that motivated the teacher to do the projects with the students. And so what happened in the beginning stage, sort of in the, before the project, how did the, the teacher prepare the students for the project, as well as what happened during the project, and then what was the final product. So it's very important to, to make th this evident, to sh for the teacher to, to make this clear in his presentation, um, in the PowerPoint or as well as in the poster to show that the, 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 the lesson or the project flowed nicely. Also very important, judges want to hear the context. So because innovation is contextual, so what is innovative in my school might not be in innovative in somebody else's school. So it's very important that the judges, the teachers make the judges understand the context where they come from. To say, in my school, these are the resources that we have. And in terms of the resources that we have, if I've done one, two, three, I think I've innovated or I've used the technology in innovative ways because of the impact that the, the project has, uh, has delivered to the overall learning. Also very important, judges want to see evidence. So um, if I say to the judges, this is what I did with my students, this is what my lesson was all about, and the judges would like to, s would ask me, so show us the evidence that this was just, was a, pro was a project 
aimed at achieving curriculum outcomes and students were engaged throughout the learning. So that's very important to make sure that you have the evidence and the evidence shows clearly that stu students were, were not just copying and pasting stuff, but actually building knowledge and also collaborating and being involved in what we call the 21st century education. And also very important is to tell your story with passion. We know of teachers who made it to the top, not necessarily because they had uh, out of the world um, ideas, but because in their communities they identified a challenge or a problem that they had to solve with the students and in a very passionate way they went on start and, and went on to, to work to do a project where the student really achieved something great in their community. And the teacher is the voice of the student in a way of explaining what happened and in a way of you know explaining where the, the the sort of the vision of the project comes from. And passion is very important. That's what judges want to see. The judges want to see that as a teacher you're not doing the project or you, you didn't do the project because of the competition but you've done you did the project with the learners because you want to to achieve curriculum outcomes and also you want to make an impact in the community where the um, the students or the school I is from so very important to to be passionate about what 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 you do as you tell a story and and the last uh, uh, slide i want to talk about what in my experience i've picked up uh, around project-based learning. Some of the characteristics of the most innovative projects. It may not be all of the, um, the, the features in one project, in one project but uh, these are some of the most common, common features of characteristics that I've, that I've seen going around the world, working with teachers in different countries, I've always picked the fact that most projects involve what we call the information process. This is, um, by information process, we're referring to a process where kids are challenged with a question or, a, or, or um, yeah, the, the, the teacher challenges the student and uh, from the challenge, the students find a way or the teacher guides the students in a way of gathering data. They could do this through interviews or searching for the information on the web. And with the information, they come back into the classroom and do something with the information, process the information, analyze the information, and come up with a product. And very important that the product should be shared. If a teacher designs a project and design and comes up with a project that ends up in the in the classroom. So the project is not impactful because what we are willing to see is teachers changing the world by means of, of involving students in, in engaged learning. So the project, the product is very important that it's shared um, beyond the walls of the classroom. Also, um, some of the most successful projects are ones where learners work collaboratively. And this is where now the role of ICT becomes critical because with ICTs, we have the opportunity now to link students uh, in ways that were previously not possible. So a great way for, 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 for us to provide students with learning opportunities that were not previously available. Um, also, um, some, some of the great projects that I've seen have an, a feature of cooperative learning. Cooperative learning, learning in a sense that learners work, working in a group and learners having roles and being clear about the roles that they're playing. So instead of saying to students, so you are going to work in a group of four, and while the students are not too clear about what they're doing in their, role, in their groups, now when they work in cooperative groups, students would have def, def, definitive roles and they know what their roles contain and they know that they know what pro product they're, they're aiming at producing by the end of the project, and then they work collaboratively and cooperatively in, in, in a way of producing that product. 
very, very important, and I've touched on this point before, higher order thinking skills, 21st century learning. This is where we see the teacher challenging the learners. So instead of learners copying and pasting, becoming unengaged, now here is a, a, an opportunity for us to get students to do a lot of problem solving, um, something which is very impactful in their community. So very important that uh, as we build our project, we factor in the idea of critical thinking, problem solving, um, collaboration, and, and teamwork, and so on. Also very important, um, most projects, um, most successful projects tend to take the what we call the constructivist principles, which is our principles that believe in, in the ability of students. So students are guided, the teacher guides the students into creating something useful, into, into constructing knowledge, into building, building knowledge and producing something authentic. Uh, very important also, we've seen, this is very um, um, common with the older students, the fact that we need to, as we design projects, make sure that learners take responsibility for their own learning. So the best projects are projects where the teacher is, 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 is a facilitator of learning. So the teacher guides the students in terms of where they can find the information, um, how they can do interviews and do research and stuff like that, but the students manage their own learning, they set their own um, 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 targets, and, and really achieve something great. Also very important, the next point, um, some of the best projects are projects which encompass or takes account of what we call multiple intelligences. So multiple intelligences, this is the, um, the uh, concept that talks about the fact that learners in a classroom come with different abilities. So if you wanna design a, a project take into account the fact that some learners perhaps they might like to, some learners are good ex at expressing their ideas on paper, so perhaps if they write essays, they are comfortable with that. Some learners are musical, they would like to sing perhaps, so if you create within the same project an opportunity for kids to do some singing, some, some learners um, like to move around, move their body around, so maybe something to do with role play and so on. So, but this is just to say, best projects are projects which are not one dimensional in terms of the product, in terms of the learning process, but tries to touch on different um, intelligences or abilities. Um, also the judges want to see how the teacher monitored the learning, both, both during the learning process and at the end of the learning process. So, because we said at the beginning, it's very important that the, the, the project is aligned to the curriculum outcomes. So it makes a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of sense for us as, a te as teachers to make, sure, to make sure that during the project, there is learning. So there's ways in which we can check or can assess the learning as it happens during the pro project as well as at the end. This is what we call continuous and formative assessment. Very important is that project-based learning encourages partnerships. So in, in many ways, the teacher uh, changes roles. Sometimes the teacher becomes a learner or a co-learner, and sometimes the teacher becomes a, a mentor. So during the project, the teacher enters into different relationships with the learners throughout the project. And very important, and uh, in relation to this forum, we, the judges want to see, or some of the best projects that we've seen are ones that use uh, technology in a transformative way, in ways that we, we have not seen before, in innovative ways. That's what we mean by cutting edge use of ICT but also very important in the context of, of, of the teacher and the learner. So that, in my view, is what makes up innovative uh, projects. And um, 
I hope I've shared with 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 you guys um, some of my uh, experiences of working with, with teachers as well as designing a project which went on to compete. That was Victor Ngabini, who is Microsoft's Africa Stick Manager. Thank you, Victor, for that fantastic presentation. It was so clear and so interesting. Good day, everyone.